Thank you, thank you very much. And I was very pleased to be asked to sort of join this bit of the important bit of the proceedings um, that is very, very much just, uh, I think, a part of a process, uh, but an important one. And it was really, I think, an opportunity to have participation from you as stakeholders and important people who should have input into the research that is done in scleroderma, and in particular, how the valuable but sort of limited resources of an organization like SRUK are used I in perhaps the best or the most um, productive way. And so all I wanted to do was just to, to give um, three slides, really, just to um, give my perspective of a research agenda or the sorts of research that, that might be uh, important. Um, and, and really that puts into context a lot of what you've heard today. We just had a really wonderful translational talk where tests are being used directly to sort of link to the biology of the disease and to outcomes. Um, but I think that there's clearly always more that you could do. And so if this moves, there we are. I just wanted to really perhaps just bring people up to um, becoming a little bit more familiar with just the types of research that are going on relevant to scleroderma and also, to, of course, to any other medical condition and, and, and health problem. And really just highlight that, I mean, we've been, I think our center and the other centers around the UK have been enormously grateful of the research that's been supported by SRUK and, of course, before that by the Raynaud's and Scleroderma Association and the, and the Scleroderma Society. And those ha these sorts of research areas have included laboratory science, really fundamental to, to perhaps one of the questions that was discussed right at, at the beginning, what, what is the cause of scleroderma? Because a feeling that if you could understand the cause of a rare condition like scleroderma, that may be a very important step towards a cure for the disease. Um, and that comes partly through trying to study the disease and the cells and the samples that you take from patients and, and, and other really basic laboratory research to understand disease mechanisms and biology. Now, understanding the disease mechanisms in scleroderma is not quite the same as understanding the cause because, of course, like in other medical areas, you don't always need to know what caused a condition, but it is often more important to know what has gone wrong or what is going wrong as the disease develops and progresses. And we heard about that from, from Francesco in the previous talk and, and earlier in the day. Um, stem cell transplantation would be an excellent example of you, you don't need to necessarily know what caused the condition, but you do need to know what sort of mechanisms you might be targeting um, in your disease. So there's laboratory research, which is tremendously important, and I think imp important to, um, uh, to really make progress fundamentally in medicine. But there's also clinical research, and I think, again, this comes back to the point of um, you can try and understand what might be the cause of scleroderma, not just by studying it in the laboratory, but actually by learning from patients and from uh, various techniques that sort of things that might have triggered or been responsible for disease. Um, uh, so what's called epidemiology, understanding um, factors that might contribute to the development of a rare disease, which by definition must occur rarely um, in the environment because otherwise the disease would be much commoner. And then I talked a bit about clinical trials. These all fit into clinical research, ways that we assess the disease that's absolutely relevant to what we've just heard about developing new and better tools to assess and predict the future. Um, and then there are the sort of areas of research that perhaps are very important and, and challenging. And I think this, some of this comes back to the sort of things we heard from Professor Black at the beginning of the day, um, the sort of impact of the disease on your ability to work, to participate in society, and uh, how you might best deliver care for scleroderma in the NHS or in the, in the um, uh, I within a healthcare system. So all of these are e things that could be researched, but of course that's a long list and it would require a lot of time and a lot of resources to, to do that. I think it's very important, I just wanted to add the personal observation that you cannot these days do research in isolation and we're very fortunate in the UK to have a network of scleroderma centers. The UK Scleroderma Study Group is very important in coordinating those and just from our own research work, we link closely with all of these other centers around the world, uh, around the country, and also 
um, other disease areas like pulmonary hypertension, and each of the centers has special expertise that we are able to tap into you know, in the UK, and of course linking into what we might call stakeholders and very much, of course, SRUK patients, NHS England, and all of the things that we have um, heard about. So it's very important to think about how your research can deliver maximum value by fitting into this network of, um, uh, of centers and of expertise. So finally, again, this is a little bit more of a personal um, feeling about what are the real priorities I, I would see as, and, and I think this partly reflects what we within the sort of scleroderma study group see as important priorities. I think it is still very important to understand the basic biology of the disease because we know with the opportunities that are emerging from other branches of medicine that if we can understand the disease better, we can probably make um, better choices about which drugs to test, which, which treatments to develop. So I think there is an importance to do the sort of fundamental um, basic research. Um, and I think that that also is important because we are a rare disease in a very competitive um, arena, if you like, where cancer and diabetes and heart disease and so many other draws on um, research that SRUK in particular has a unique opportunity to sort of focus on things that are especially relevant to, um, to scleroderma and Raynaud's. So I think that there is an opportunity to really make a difference in that way. Um, but I think it's also important to think about how research can contribute to the clinical priorities of patient needs. And I think this has always been, and, and this is really one of the reasons I think to have input into the research agenda, how we can do research that might improve access to therapies, the way that services are organized in the UK, better access, for example, and better justification for identifying patients for stem cell transplant that we've heard about, um, and how we can support the development of infrastructure for research and specialist centers as well as, uh, as the actual research itself. Um, and I think, again, this is increasingly a competitive and important area because um, here we're not competing with other disease areas and other charities for, for, for research funding, for funding, um, for research monies. We are actually really competing within the, the UK healthcare system for resources um, for scleroderma as opposed to other disease areas, and, and this is a very important role uh, for, the, for SRUK, but something that also is relevant to research, because these days, I think decision makers in government and in the NHS absolutely require evidence, and that means research, um, to help make decisions, and that's certainly been the case as we've tried to make progress to get access to drugs as they're licensed in scleroderma. So I just wanted to sort of really identify that there are these different areas the research is quite a broad thing, and so I, I hope that's of some help and that maybe you can write down some ideas. And I think essentially you're going to really collect, this is a, this is a one direct, this is one directional at the moment because you're going to give ideas and that will sort of feed into a more important, longer ongoing process to, to set the research agenda. So I think this was seen as a very useful opportunity to have your input. Um, so I'm going to finish there and um, uh, I don't know whether we're going to have some time to do this or whether you just want people to, to jot things down and they'll be collected, um, how you would like to do that. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so Ariane is going to field some questions. Um. Fabulous. Thanks very much. I think it's... Um well, thank you very much, Chris, because I think it puts the, you know, the complexities of things into context. But I think it's exciting. You know, there are so many possible areas that we can, we can engage in. So are, are there any questions for Chris or, or comments that you'd like to make? Just we just have a, a few minutes before um, Terminator wraps up things. Uh, yes, there's a question there. Right, oh dear, well, um, that's not, um, well, <laughs> so I, it was your so slide. Yes, <laughs> so I better I take responsibility for that. That is, so I think one of the real challenges, of course, is to make sure we have um, accessible uh, uh, specialist centers for, for patients. That's very, very important. There's a little bit of, um, of course, the way that the NHS um, is, is organized is, um, uh, is different, in, in fact, in the devolved nations. So there are centers in Scotland um, that are, 
doing research and providing important clinical care for, s for scleroderma. And in fact, they do link in with our UK study group. But um, for, the practice, for the purposes of the sort of projects that are ongoing, um, obviously there is a more of a geographical focus. Wales, and I think several people have in, in the audience have, have highlighted this. I mean, Wales, uh, I think uh, it, there are also challenges. They have a different sort of uh, arrangement for funding and for healthcare. The NHS structure is a little bit different in Wales. Um, but uh, I certainly link with centres there, and, um, and we're trying to develop more um, interest in, in scleroderma. But um, uh, you're right, one of the challenges always is to try and make sure that there are centres that can provide the expert care, and, and, uh, and that feeds into research uh, locally to, to patients where possible. Yes, no, I'd just like to, to reassure you that the Dundee and Glasgow groups very much feed into the UK Scleroderma mm. Study Group, so we do have representation, so be reassured. Um, Hilda. <laughs> so I think that, you know, there are fun, there, uh, of course, um, we're very grateful, uh, you know, there are opportunities for funding for rare diseases. In fact, um, we have, there was a, a funding initiative, a European funding initi initiative from ULAR, which is the European Rheumatology Organization. They funded an orphan diseases program specifically in scleroderma a few years ago, and we were very fortunate um, that the UK, in fact, Francesco and Arian and I all received, our centers received grants for different projects that were international projects across Europe, but leading projects um, specifically around rare diseases. And there are some other initiatives within the uh, NI NIHR, within the NHS, um, for funding for rare diseases. The problem, of course, always is that there's never enough funding, um, and there are a lot of, 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 of potential diseases. Okay, maybe one last question. So I think that, you know, that's, it, it, that, uh, that's an important point. It's clearly, um, uh, it d that depends on the research, to be honest, because some research projects are more outreaching and, and, and sort of patients could, could participate. And, and that's where I think, again, organizations like SI UK can be very important in publicizing studies and making sure patients are able to participate and there's information that's publicly available on websites about uh, things. There are practical issues around um, clinical trials and some of the research studies that there may be special techniques that can only be done in the centers. Um, and clinical trials, you, you know, are complicated in the sense that they are very well regulated to be safe and therefore uh, they can only usually be done in selected centers. With that in mind, you know, we're very, one of the reasons for having a network in the UK is to ensure that if patients are suitable, um, they could perhaps be referred to a center to participate in a trial, um, not necessarily to have their care taken over, but um, it's an important point that, that you make, and um, I think each study is a bit different. <laughs>